good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, and welcome uh, to Croydon College uh, and our series of webinars all about uh, being an apprentice with Croydon College. Uh, this is the first of a series that we're running this week. Uh, we have two today. This one is obviously about construction and engineering. Um, and later on, after this one, we're moving into another, another webinar, which is all about hospitality. Um, so this afternoon, we want to be giving you everything that you might need to know about why you should consider being an apprentice, uh, what you need to do that, how you need to do it. Uh, and most importantly, what are some of the vacancies that are currently available that you might be looking uh, to fulfill uh, and take part in. Uh, so we're hoping very much that we'll hear from many of you who are watching us this afternoon. Um, and so before we move on, I just want to talk to you about how you can talk to us this afternoon. Uh, we'd like you to do that as much as possible. Uh, and we are on the Zoom platform. So for those of you that don't know about Zoom, let me just explain. There's a couple of ways that you can talk to us. First of all, you have a Q&A button in the bottom of your screen and if you click on that button you can put in a question uh, about something that you want to ask uh, one of our panelists this afternoon um, and uh, at the appropriate time i can then put that question to the panel on your behalf so totally anonymous uh, you don't have to put it yourself i will ask on your behalf but please any questions that you have uh, please share them because i'm sure they will be questions that are in a lot of other people's minds this afternoon so let's try and get that interaction as much as possible you also have a chat function uh, and on the chat function that enables you to just make a comment or indeed you can uh, ask another question via the chat function but keep your eye on the chat because there might be some uh, opportunity for our panelists to actually chat to you if you've got a particular question in relation maybe to the one of the vacancies then our panelists here will have an eye on that chat and they can virtually chat back to you and give you the answers that you need. Um, so that's how you can talk to us. As I say, please uh, get involved as you, as you can in that, uh, in that opportunity uh, to enable us uh, to hear from you this afternoon. So first of all, before uh, uh, we move on to our panellists, I'm going to introduce them to you. Um, we'll be hearing from John McLean uh, in just a few moments time. John is the Head of Apprenticeships at Croydon College uh, and he'll be able to answer any questions that you have and he's going to talk us through uh, all about Croydon College and what it's like to be an apprentice uh, here at the college. And then I'm delighted that we're joined by three businesses uh, that all have vacancies that they are able to talk to you about. So first of all, I'll be introducing Daryl Horn. Uh, Daryl is the HR manager of Centronic, who are based up in New Addington. Um, then we have Angela Entwistle with us. Uh, she's the apprenticeship development officer of Clarion Futures, and that is part of the Clarion Housing Group. Uh, and she'll be talking to you uh, about vacancies uh, in that sector. And then finally, delighted that Rupali Sharma is with us. So Rupali is a senior talent acquisition specialist at Govia Thameslink Railway. Um, so they're all local companies uh, with local opportunities. Uh, and as I say, we'll be hearing from each of those individually over the course of the next 45 minutes or so. So first of all, um, I'm going to pass over uh, and ask uh, if um, John McLean, Head of Apprenticeships, can talk to us about being an apprentice here at the college. Thanks, John. Hi, hi everyone. My name is John McLean, as Catherine said. I, um, I'm Head of Apprenticeships from Croydon College, and I'll give you a brief overview uh, that will cover who an apprenticeship is for, uh, dispel some rumours, hopefully, basic eligibility, and hopefully provide some uh, advice and guidance through a Q&A at the end. And an apprenticeship, ideally, is a training development programme that's specifically tied to, to a job role with an employer. Okay. It allows you to gain technical and functional knowledge as well as accredited real practical experience constructed within your job role. You'll also develop all the necessary professional skills for your work. Apprentices earn a salary while they learn. They gain nationally recognized qualifications, uh, right up to degree level, and receive professional on-the-job training through mentorship with the employers. At Croydon Co uh, College, we offer a whole range of different types of apprenticeships to support your roles and cover many of the varied career paths. Uh, 
Apprenticeships are available in more than 170 industries covering over 1,500 job roles. And I, and I would just like to stress that, that apprenticeships are not just for 16 to 24 year olds. We, we, we now have apprenticeships and employers uh, who get from 16 years old, depending on the, 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 the role, right up to 64. Okay. And what, who are they for? They're for uh, employers can offer apprenticeships to new entrants, meaning uh, people coming new into the industry like yourself, or they can grow talent from amongst their current employees as well. You can find them. Sorry. The focus of an apprenticeship is to, is to equip you with the necessary skills and knowledge required for your specific role uh, and, your, and your future progression within that role. Thanks, John. So um, there is a wide variety of apprenticeships available at the college, aren't there? And today we're just talking oh, yes, about yes. Um, construction and engineering. Um, but, um, you know, in addition to that, can you just give me a bit of a flavour? What are some of the other subjects uh, that, that we have? Gosh, um, uh, health and social care, IT, uh, accountancy, the, the full gambit. And, and I guess that you can be studying accountancy, but in a construction related firm or you- Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. There, 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 there's always crossover. We, we, we do an awful lot of that. We, you can work in retail, work as an accountant, et cetera. Great. That's really good to hear. So um, what we're going to move on to now is uh, just a conversation uh, with our three employers uh, that are with us this afternoon. Uh, and you're going to be hearing exactly about their companies and about the positions that they can offer if you're considering uh, maybe applying to them for one of their positions. Um, so first of all, um, I'm going to pass over to Daryl. So Darren is the HR manager at Centronic. So good to have you with us this afternoon, Daryl. Thank you, Catherine. Um, as Catherine said, I'm the HR manager for Centronic. Uh, we're based up in uh, New Addington, so not too far from Croydon. It's our 75th year this year. Uh, so it's a big, big, uh, big year for us been a strange year at the same time um, but we've been built on apprentices you know we, we've hired apprentices for years and years and years uh, and they create the, the spine of our knowledge and experience um, so a bit about us so we are one of the world's leading manufacturers of radiation detectors really interesting stuff uh, we develop we design manufacture and test all on this site got about 90 people working here so we're not massive, but, but we, we do an important job. Uh, the, the kind of markets that we sell into, uh, you, you see them there. So nuclear, aerospace, defense, research, industrial space, oil and gas and medical. So again, there's a lot of, lot of um, expertise that go into what we do. Uh, so we offer apprenticeships in engineering, manufacturing, um, and also other roles too, you know, from office-based roles through to purchasing, that sort of thing. So there's always something that would suit uh, uh, anyone who would be interested. Um, and it's not just about training development for us. We, you know, we, obviously that's the core of what we do for apprentices, but we, we talk about a long-term career. So if you join us as, as an apprentice, there's a career at the end of it. Okay, so if you join us, um, we've got a vacancy at the moment for, for technicians. So if you join us at the moment, you, you'll receive a, a qualification appropriate to that. So at the moment, we're looking at engineering operative, which is level two. And the kind of roles that that would suit would be me mechanical manufacturing, maintenance, electrical engineering, fabrication or an engineering technician level three, which is more of an assembly technician, uh, a fitter role, CNC, tool makers, product designers. So there's something for everyone really. Um, as it says there, you'll learn from experienced, highly qualified engineers, technicians and scientists. You know, we have a few doctors here, so it's, you know, it's interesting work. Uh, people that push technology to its limit to, to create what we do. Um, like I said, we've got 75 years history in the company, so you'd be part of a great precision engineering firm. So there's, there's kudos for, for that on your CV, I think. Um, and, you know, you don't need any work experience at all. We, we will train you, we will develop you, um, but we want you to be enthusiastic and helpful, motivated, and all those kind of things. And I'll talk a bit more about those in a second. Um, so this, the kind of support we will give you, um, you your manager and supervisor, uh, most important people too so they give you tasks manage your workload get you involved in new projects uh, they talk with you about your development plan making sure you set, you've set objectives and you're meeting those objectives um, but we'll also give you a mentor so you know a buddy that you'd work with on a daily basis someone who's probably been an apprentice themselves um, and they can help you to, to learn and you can talk to them about anything 
Um, you'll also meet up with other apprentices. So we, at the moment, we've got three. Uh, so you, you create a group uh, and, and you can talk together and help each other out. Uh, and we ask you to, to present back work that you've done, um, that sort of thing. And at the end of the apprenticeship, we, you, the basic apprenticeship, we expect you to go into an advanced framework uh, or just move into a permanent role, depending on where you are. Uh, I just want to talk about our core values. So these are really important to us. Um, these, this kind of gives you an indication of the kind of people that we want working for us. So our core values actually spell out the word spirit, which is quite nice. And, and these were created by staff, not by management. So we talk about safety. We talk about people, which is about development. Uh, integrity, which is about doing the right thing, making the right decision. Uh, results are really important to us. Obviously, we're a customer-focused business, so results are important. Uh, we want people to help us improve, so we strive for excellence in, in all that we do. And teamwork, so you know, working with other people, sharing knowledge, and building good relationships. So they spell the word spirit, and I'll just uh, put a slide up there to show you some of the recent Spirit Award winners. So we have sort of an Employee of the Month Award, which we call the Spirit Award. So the last 12 awards that were given out are there, um, and two of those are current apprentices. Uh, another four of those were apprentices, so you can see how important those those people are to us. Next slide, please. Uh, just a little bit about our pay and benefits. So we're, we're a living wage employer, so we will pay an enhanced apprentice salary. Uh, we've got a good range of benefits. So 25 days of standard holiday instead of 20 days, plus bank holidays. We give life insurance from day one uh, and an above standard company pension. And probably the biggest benefit for most people was that we, we were four and a half day work a week. So uh, it's 37.5 hours, but you get to go home at 12.30 on Friday. So that's really nice. Uh, and then just a few um, success stories. So just want to give you a flavour of the kind of path that some of our apprentices have taken. So Mark joined in 2010, 10 years ago now, but he's, he's now a design engineer. He joined as a machinist. Uh, we sponsored him recently to complete a degree at South Bank University. Uh, Tapas joined four years ago as an assembly technician. He's now on a career path to manufacturing engineer. He's recently gained some welding qualifications, specialist welding. Uh, he's about to commence a degree in aerospace engineering in September. And he's a key figure on our company works council. So he can be part of that sort of thing too. And then Taylor, just last year, he joined us. He, he's coming to the end of year one of training uh, and he's a member of our learning and development committee. So there's lots of opportunities here on site for anyone that joins, but thank you. Thanks very much, Daryl. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Um, I'm just really interested in um, you. Your you have three apprentices at the moment, and you've we got do, yes, vacancies. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So we, we try and, and I mean it's important to us to have apprentices uh, here all the time because it's about that um, convey about of success. We bring people in early, take them through years and years of development, and behind them we're bringing in more apprentices. So we look to have you know three at a time. We've got one who's about to come to the end of, of, of um, his apprenticeship. So we're looking to hire some more, but we're also on a, on a growth period as well. So um, if the right apprentice comes along, we will find a position for them. Um, so we'll right. sort of three a year, but we, we, we add more if we can for the right um, people. Is it in, presumably most people will join you not really knowing what role they might want to end up playing. I mean, you've given a great yeah. long list of things that you could be doing within <laughs> yeah. Centronic, but yeah. do you have to come in knowing that you want to end up being a welder or whatever the job might be? Or is it a learning process to work out where you might fit? That's a really good question. You don't have to know what you want to do. And I totally, totally understand that people don't always know what their career looks like, but what we'd expect is that you get a flavor for what we can do because we're, you know, we're small, small in size of people, but we have a, a broad range of skills and abilities here. Then, you know, something could take somebody's interest um, and then they can move into a, a slightly different um, career path than they expected to. So we have a lot of flexibility here for supporting any type of growth. You know, if you could join as, a, as an office based employee, for example, actually want to get into engineering, we can we can manage that, too. So. We can move you from anywhere to anywhere else. If you show the aptitude and, and the desire, you know, the skill and the will to do something, we can help you with that. And, and how big is the company? You say you're, what is your? So we're 90 people um, okay. as of today. Um, and, you know, as well as apprentices, we, we have students on site. So, you know, at the moment, we've got a couple of students from a, from a university doing eight week placement. So we, we're very supportive of development. 
and training and and helping the future generation to right to, to be successful well, it sounds like um a really exciting opportunity and an opportunity i think that sounds like you can as you've demonstrated with those apprentices that you mentioned that you can grow with the company um Definitely. and develop you know a genuine career um perhaps in an area that you hadn't ever previously considered um which yeah. is which is a nice part i think many people don't know what they want to do so it sounds like you can come into your company and really sort of maybe find your niche as you say if you've got the right aptitude so for those yeah. of you that are watching um i will come to any questions that you've got um at the end of hearing from our our next um uh, business uh, i'm going to ask angela who is the apprenticeship development officer at clarion um, to talk to us about her company and what she can offer. So thanks for that, Daryl. And hi, Angela. Hi, thanks, Catherine. So yes, my role is Apprenticeship Development Officer within um, Clarion. Um, and we're the other end of the spectrum to Daryl. We've got 2,000 staff across um, three um, business structures. So um, the housing group is main, which we're um, business of social purpose. So we are a social landlord. We have um, then we've got um, the housing association arm. We've got Latimer who are responsible for um, our private sales business that supports the social aspect. And we've got Clarion Futures, but also on there that isn't mentioned um, is within the association, we've got Clarion Response who are repair team as well. So it's quite large. Um, there are over um, 2000 staff Across the business nationwide um, so it's nice quite um, large and varied um, if you want to go to the next slide Catherine for me so when it comes to the apprenticeship we do apprenticeships um, focusing and purely today sort of on our um, trade side within response but we have apprenticeships across the whole of the business covering business admin um, through to recruitment resourcer um, and we also um, do a lot of housing obviously because our housing officers so when you are on apprenticeship within clarion you we split it within ton of two aspects so you have the fast track which is the recruitment side so once you've shown interest once you've um applied through croydon for the example our trade apprenticeships we will then get you all in We'll get you to kind of meet the manager, to kind of meet the team that you'll be working on um, and do some job shadowing. Then you'll go through the recruitment process. And then once you're in place, as well as having your assessor um, at the college um, and your manager, you will also have a mentor. And that is normally somebody that has been within the business for more than two years um, and isn't somebody within your department. So you'll get aspects, um, you'll get introduced to other people within the team, which means you get to have a broader knowledge of just where your role fits within the organisation, but an understanding of where you can fit in. Because mentoring, one of our mentors um, is our um, operations director. And she started off as a um, temp admin assistant within housing. Um, she's developed her career and grown and developed and she's now um director of operations for the whole of the business so you can if it's something you want to stay in the world is your oyster within within us within clarion so which is really exciting um next slide thank oh brilliant so yeah so various through business admin through to quality surveyors we've got um some quality surveying apprentices within our development team and within our health and safety team and for us, echoing what Darrell said, really, it's not about you having the previous experience, the previous knowledge, that um, we aren't looking for polished diamonds at all. What we're looking for are people that we can help shape and develop in a career. It's all about attitude and aptitude. If you've got those things, we can teach you everything else. In conjunction with, with the college, it's not a problem, but you have to want it. Next slide, Kevin. So fast track um, to sort of is the first part of the recruitment process. You'll apply through Croydon, but actually once you get through to us, you'll get a work placement. We'll work with college um, on doing your functional skills assessment. Um, you'll, we go through some employability elements so you kind of understand really where we're coming from and company culture, which again is so important for us. Um, well, there is some elements of um, non-accredited and accredited training in that fast track in that session. 
So if you aren't successful, you've got something to then take away with you. If you've come through the fast track, you are definitely going to get an interview with the manager. And then once that, we then do an onboarding workshop. So you'll spend time with other apprentices. You'll get to meet other people within the department that you'll be working alongside as well. So the mentoring is for us massive. It's so key to make sure that you as an apprentice within Clarion is supported, um, which is why the mentor that we pair you with isn't from your team. Um, because it's about having an open, honest conversation with the, with the mentor. So it's supportive, it's to support, it's also to help you network across the organisation. We're such a large organisation, you might start off working, doing carpentry within response teams, so you've got your small little patch, but actually it isn't fully necessarily trade that you realise halfway through the apprenticeship that you want to develop your career in, but that is still a skill that we would look for if you went into health and safety. Every apprenticeship that we offer, we want people to be flexible so they're not pigeonholing themselves. And by mentoring, you get to understand and see other people from the business, which is really, really exciting for us. So for us, um, last year we hit our thousandth apprentice. Um, which we love, we're very excited about. Um, this year, um, we've had to scale back, obviously, due to some of the things that are going on out there at the moment. Um, our massive plans, um, we were um, wanting to hit um, up to um, 1,250, but we're not looking at that now. But for us, it's about just having large amount, um, building up apprenticeships within a network for us. So again, um, it's really kind of, if you, any questions that you've got are really about types of apprenticeship. For us, it's about social values, which isn't just us internally, it's us working with our subcontractors and levels. We go from, every, we ideally like start people in level three in qualifications, but we will look at level twos depending on the roles. Um, and we go up to um, level six, which is quite nice. And salary, again, like Daryl, we um, pay um, the living wage. Um or the full wage minus 20%, whichever's the most. Um, and we always look at kind of levy. So anyone applying for anything, we will always, I will always bully managers into taking you on as apprentices because that's where the passion is. Thank you. Um, so yeah, that just says it all. So if Catherine has got any questions, that's, that's me. That's great. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I have got some questions. <laughs> um, uh, you have an office in Croydon, I believe. Um, at the moment, it's, it's relatively new. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, can you, if you're an apprentice, where can you, where would you work from? Are, I mean, are there just Croydon vacancies or are there? Oh, no. uh, it's, I mean, because we're national, um, for me personally, um, I'm just going to be quite selfish and talk about London and Croydon. Yeah. Um, so it depends on where the, the team that you're working with is based. So for the multi-trade apprentices at the moment, they will be most likely to be kind of based in our Bromley office, but because you're working with another colleague, you have a patch to cover. So it isn't just specific. So um, the quantity surveyors that um, we're looking at for development, working development team, they are based in the Croydon office because that's where their team are based. Um, we've got some roles coming up in the next um, six months within Clarion Futures ourselves. Um, and those roles will be based across South and North London, depending on the teams. So. Right. So you could you could be in a number of places then depending on a number of places and but also going forward with um this situation um a lot of us are all going to be once we do get back into working into offices because at the moment none of us are in the offices um it will be more split between office based and what home based as well but if you're based from home as an apprentice you are still supported you are still getting phone calls you're still getting zoom calls um and you're given all the equipment so you don't need to worry about that right so although we're on a construction and engineering yes. webinar this afternoon actually it's not just construction and engineering as you no. say there's no. a number of other office based and admin yeah. uh, finance based roles um so really, it's just about understanding that Claren as a group have, has obviously this huge commitment um, to bringing apprenticeships through their business, which is really great to hear. Um, so thank you for that. I'm sure we'll have some more questions for you um, at the end. But I'm going to pass over now to Rupali, 
Um, so Rapali is with us from Govia Thames Link Railway. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about GTR. Hi, Rapali. Thanks, Catherine. Um, so yeah, so I'm here from GTR. Um, not many people know who GTR are, but when I talk to you about the individual brands, you'll probably be like, yep, I get your train. Um, so we look after Southern, um, Thames Link, um, Gatwick Express and Great Northern. Um, so we are actually the largest um, train operating company in the UK. Um, currently we provide about 25% of all our passenger journeys. Um, our main vision is to make sure that we live in a world where our journey, every journey is taken care of. So to us, our customers are vital to our success. Um, we want to ensure that we provide a reliable service, we give good value for money, um, and we also want to make sure that good customer service is at the heart of everything we do. Um, and we are currently going through a revamp that really ensuring that we are providing um, high levels of customer satisfaction across all our brands. So if you ever have any feedback, feel free to get in touch. I will put you through to the right person. Um, but yes, our people are our most valuable and important asset. And obviously without them, we wouldn't be able to kind of have, you know, the service that we have. Um, and obviously with recent times, there's been a lot of effort in to make sure that we're providing a safe and secure service for all our passengers. Yeah, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so this is where um, you guys come in. Uh, we are currently um, looking at hiring engineering apprentices um, at our depots. Um, if you're interested in maintenance, whether you like um, going through, putting things together, taking things apart, whether you want to go down the management route, we've got opportunities for all sorts of levels. Um, obviously, a big effort is make, making into making sure that there's shorter turnaround times to ensure that our train's back on track and repaired um, efficiently we've also got a brand new fleet of trains recently so again to ensure that you know um, in terms of the journey for our passengers is a much more um, valuable one um, you've probably seen the difference between some of the trains of Southern and Thameslink um, so there's a lot of work going into that you know we really want to make sure that there's a big difference um, that our customers can see in terms of the effort that we're putting in and this is where our engineers um, get involved um, next slide please so one of the opportunities um, that we have is the uh, engineering apprenticeship at GTR. So in terms of advertising, we are going to be opening in September, um, and that's for a September 2021 start. Um, we recently hired 12 engineers um, to start in September this year. That was all done towards the end of last year, and it's a four-stage um, apprenticeship program. So it's extremely hands-on, but you also spend the first year in college. Um, so obviously one of the biggest benefits of joining GTR is that you get free travel on all our networks. Um, so the college College where you would spend your first year is based in Red Hill, that's East Surrey College, where you'll get all the basics. Um, in terms of um, requirements, all you ask people to have is a level four um, in maths, science and English. And if that's something that you actually don't have yet, um, that's something we can also help with you um, help you get within your first year. Um, in terms of age limits, there are no age limits. Um, we've recently actually just hired a 40-year-old woman who wanted a to change her career completely. Um, so that's something that I think I'm quite proud to share um, because obviously you never know when people want to kind of uh, make a change or where to start. So this I think is a really good opportunity. Um, you do come out of it with a recognized qualification um, of rolling stock um, engineer in level three. There also are options to do a level four option um, during your second year as long as obviously you're progressing well. And again, as I've mentioned before, depending on what route you're interested in, you can go down the technical route management or training um, currently our engineering population about 50% of them are actually ex apprentices um, so that shows that in terms of you know if you're looking for a long-term career um, GTR is probably, probably um, one place to come and even engineering looking at as a career path um, there's still you know a high need for them um, yeah next slide please so the application process um, so at the moment um, what we did last year, um, obviously with COVID, things may change. Um, we have an assessment centre where you come in and um, we look at kind of seeing um, what we introduced last year was basically a Meccano set where we asked everyone to take it apart and put it back together. Um, and it wasn't just about how quick you could do it, but it was also kind of how you could follow instructions, um, kind of, you know, see if that's something that you're interested in, um, because obviously that's a big part of taking our trains apart and putting them back together. Um, you also get a chance to visit one of 
of our depots. Um, so our Selhurst depot, which is around the corner, it's our largest depot in the UK. Um, you get to see it's in action what people do, um, what goes on, and also ask questions for some of the managers. Um, once you've gone through the assessment centre, if you are successful and you pass, um, the next stage of the process is a face-to-face -face interview, which um, last year was um, conducted with our apprenticeship manager, Tom, um, and myself. So again, it's a strength-based interview, just focuses on what you've done. So again, regardless of your background, where you come from, whether you're studying, whether you haven't got a lot of work experience, um, what we really try and hone in is look at your potential and see what you've got to offer. Uh, we're not expecting, expecting anyone to have bags and bags of experience. As long as you've got that initiative to want to learn um, and, you know, I'd probably say people who like um, subjects like maths, physics, IT, um, probably are one of the best ones to look at um, because obviously it's quite technical. And then after that, once you, um, if you pass the face-to-face -face interview, then obviously we move into offer stage. So as I've already mentioned, we did have 12 offers that we uh, made last year. So we are hoping to do the same this year. Um, well, I've, as I've mentioned, the opening window is September and we normally um, advertise until the end of October. So if this is something you are interested in, make sure that you go onto our website. Um, I can... There's a section where you'll ask me to fill in some supporting information. It's really key that you showcase in that paragraph why you want this opportunity and what makes you stand out from everyone. Um, so not to put you off, obviously, but last last year we had about 900 applications. Um, but it just, you know, and that just shows how kind of um, how popular this apprenticeship is and the program is. And like I've said to you already, 50% of our population in our engineering function are ex-apprentices. Um, so we have a lot of people that um, want to take, um, that get want to get involved um, or know someone already that works for us. Um, most of your apprenticeship, the remaining three years, um, takes part as a rotation period. So as I've already mentioned, our Selhurst Depot. We've also got Brighton, Hornsey and Battersea as well. So it really gives you an opportunity to... Um, see each of our depots, see how they work. Um, obviously, every depot does something, specializes in something different. Um, and at the end of the four years, you do have an opportunity to potentially um, stay on with us because obviously we still need you. You know, we've, we, we would like you to stay with us. Um, and obviously, we'll look at where you live, what your location is in terms of what the best position is. Um, I know salary is something that's really important. And I know it's something that people do ask us. Um, so just to give you an idea, your first year um, when you start with us and you go to college is actually 14,000. So you're actually getting paid to go to college for the first year. Um, you also, after that, it goes to 16, 18 and 20. And once you've finished your four years, a starting salary, you can look at about 40,000. So it literally doubles. Um, we've got quite a few apprentices now that are in their final year that are looking to now purchase houses and stuff. So really getting that financial security I think you know this is a really positive apprenticeship um, to go for especially when there's still these conversations about whether I should go to university am I missing out on anything um, the other thing I really want to highlight as well if you do decide that you want to go and do a degree and you want to study further that's something again GTR can help you with so further down the line if you decide that's you know that's something you want to do we're more than happy to pay for you to go to university to support kind of your, your career path. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a really quick overview of um, what it's like for our process. I've got a final video that I just want to show you of one of our current apprentices. Um, thank you. My name is Twinkle Clark. I'm an engineering apprentice and I've been with GTR for three years. What attracted me to GTR is that it's a career, it's secure, you get free travel across our network and the, the pay is quite good as well. <laughs> the work environment at GTR is friendly. Everyone is very supportive. Yeah, if you need a helping hand, there's always someone that can help you out. The biggest benefit of our, the reduced travel deals in GTR is that you can travel not just on our network, but up to Scotland, across Europe as well. There's always a discount somewhere available for you. The best part of the job is getting acknowledged for doing something well. What I'd like to do next when I pass out my apprenticeship is either move into a team leader role or a team tech role. What has kept me at GTR is knowing that when I pass out my apprenticeship, I'll be a qualified rail technician engineer. I would recommend anyone to work at GTR, no matter what background you come from, even if you don't know much about trains, you can always learn. 
there is a lot of different career paths you can take, not just engineering sector, be a train driver, customer services, admin, HR, anything. Okay. Thank you. So apologies, there was a bit of a lag in the video. Um, but if anyone wants any more information, please visit our website. It's, it's GTR Railway Careers. Um, we're always keeping information on there. Um, and I'm currently in the process of developing a new apprenticeship page. Um, so hopefully that will be on there in the next couple of months. But also, um, as Twinkle mentioned, there are other opportunities as well, um, not just engineering, but we also have business admin, marketing, um, safety, it really depends on what you're interested in. But yeah, thanks, Catherine. A <laughs> uh, um, couple of questions from me. First of all, just like to comment that it's wonderful to see a female training to be uh, an engineer. Um, so it, we know that uh, these vacancies are for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of um, age, uh, apprenticeships, as John mentioned at the beginning, are not just for people coming out of, of their sort of further education. Um, mm -hmm. what, how does that work with, with Thameslink and, and Govia? Are you open to age, any age, presumably? Yeah, yeah. Like, as I mentioned before, we've actually hired a 40-year-old woman this year um, because she just wanted to change her career path. She wanted to start something new. Um, and this was a great opportunity for her to learn. Um, so, yeah, as long as you're 16, once you start with us on um, Depot, that's all we need. Great. Um, I just want to pick up on something you said about the application process, and I know we're going to move into this this now. But you know, clearly, it can be a bit daunting for people sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when you talk about the numbers. You know, you mentioned nine hundred people uh, applying, so making sure that you're actually at the top of your game, I guess, in terms of ensuring that you can um, apply properly. But I guess that's where the local college comes in, Croydon College, uh, in terms of supporting applicants through that process, um, which ties us nicely into um, our, our next um, panellists this afternoon. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to Shirley, uh, Shirley Rodriguez uh, from Croydon College. Um, and Shirley is um, going to talk to you, going to talk to us about that process, aren't you, Shirley? Um, so I'm just going to share my screen with you all again now. So uh, there you go. Hopefully you can see my screen. Let me just go to start slide. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Fantastic. So I'm Shirley Rodriguez. I'm the apprenticeship team manager at Croydon College um, for the construction and building services. Can I just go to the next slide, please? Yep. So actually within Within the college, uh, just in the construction and building services area, we have over 300 apprentices currently. Um, but obviously, we have lots of other apprenticeships, but this is just my particular area. Um, so we're going to look at the overview of the apprenticeship and how it's delivered, what courses, what we currently um, are offering at Croydon College. But we are open and we are always looking at offering other um, qualifications and apprenticeships within construction um, and apprenticeship and looking at the standards. You want to go to the next slide, please? Sorry, bear with me. Not one That's okay. That's it. Here we go. Okay. So just a brief overview of the apprenticeship. Um, so it's an alternative form of education, um, obviously separate schools and university studies, but also as we've mentioned before, um, it is open to people of all ages. So, you know, it's not an, just an alternative for a younger person. Um, you know, it can be somebody later on in life, you know, as we said, a 40 year old um, woman that joined an engineering apprenticeship. So that's the fantastic thing um, because I know years ago, apprenticeships were really just for younger people. Um, and we need to get that message across that, you know, we have all ages. In fact, I'm just trying to think of our oldest apprentice. I think I have a 52-year-old who's doing a level four site supervisor um, apprenticeship at the moment. So yeah, any age, and, and a lot of our apprentices, you know, are um, are older um, apprentices, which is fantastic. Um, so the qualific the qualifications within the apprenticeship. Um, sometimes that varies now because we, we're moving on to standard. We were we were um, most of our apprentices were framework and we're shifting now to a standard qualification. Um, so the difference is where framework was an MVQ qualification um, and you would have different units and work across the different units. The qualifications now are moving to standard 
um, and that's across all sectors where sometimes there's a qualification attached and sometimes there isn't. Um, but at the end of it, you have an endpoint assessment. So somebody externally will um, have an assessment plan um, and they will tell you what it is you're required to do for the endpoint assessment. So there is quite a shift um, in the qualifications and the overview of the um, apprenticeships currently across all sectors. Um, so as an apprentice, you will work 30 to 40 hours per week. And generally, within construction, our apprentices do come to college one day a week. Um, and the day will vary depending on, on our programme. But we will give you one day a week that you will attend college. The day will be split into a practical and theory. So you may come in and have practical in the morning and then theory in the afternoon. Um, also, as part of the apprenticeship, you will... If you haven't already gained your GCSEs in English and Maths, um, you will need to do up, up a skill with your English and Maths. Depending on the apprenticeship will depend on whether you need to be qualified to a level one uh, qualification within Maths and English or whether it requires level two. Um, so that will also be attached to the apprenticeship if you require it. And you will have functional skills classes at the end of the day. So there'll be two hour maths and English class. You wouldn't be expected to do maths and English at the same time. So if you needed to do maths and English, we would get you to, to work on one of the um, disciplines. So either the maths or the English, and then you will gain that qualification and then move on to the next one. So we wouldn't expect you to do both at the same time because you know, with, with your vocational qualification and the maths and English, we think it might be a little bit too much. Um, and we do have support. Sometimes we do offer off-site tests as well for functional skills. So that's something maybe we can offer um, an additional one-to-one -one support as required. Um, so the three key areas of the apprenticeship is skills, knowledge and behaviour. When we're looking at the standards now, it's split into those three areas. So we're looking at skills that you need, you're required to have for that apprenticeship, the knowledge or understanding, and the behaviour. So how you demonstrate behaviour, things like timekeeping, um, and willingness to learn, and, and things like that. So that's generally how the, the, the apprenticeship will be split up. Um, and you're allowed to progress to high level qualifications in some instances, gain recognised status within the sector. So the apprenticeships can vary from different levels. So we do have level two all the way up to degree level, which would be level seven. And the endpoint assessment is graded. So you either obviously fail, which you don't meet the endpoint assessment, which we hope doesn't happen at all. Um, then it's a pass, merit or distinction. Could I have the next slide, please? So in order to help you complete your apprenticeship, so we'll help, help you through, which I explained about classroom-based lessons. So you have a tutor. So at the college, you're assigned a tutor. And then in the workplace, you will have an assessor. So and a tutor and assessor are generally two different people. So the tutor is the college-based person that teaches you when you come into college. And then you are assigned an assessor. And they help you to build up your portfolio and they come out and observe you in the workplace. So they will arrange, they will negotiate with you and your employer when they can come out to see you, which is generally on site. And they will observe different parts um, that they need to see and they will um, assess you on that. And that will be part of your portfolio evidence, as well as putting together pictures of evidence, witness testimonies from employers as well. So industry experience, um, you'll have online portfolio, which we use a uh, one file system. So your port portfolio will be online. And um, support, you have support in your role by your employers. So it's employer support, your support from your assessor and your tutor. So it's a combination of all of those three areas that will be supporting you and guiding you through the apprenticeship. Um, also, your assessor will also come out to you and visit every eight weeks. 
We call that reviews. So every eight weeks you will have a review. So they can just make sure that you are, you're okay, that if you need any support, if you're having any difficulties in any areas, and just generally looking at your progress and where you're at with that progress. Um, you will have to do 20% off the job training, which is additional, which is enhancement towards your apprenticeship. So it's additional things. Um, part of coming to, to, to college is part of off the job training. Um, any other training that your employer may provide for you, health and safety training, um, any kind of related training to, the, to what, your, um, what your job role is. Um, health and safety training, anything like that. And that, that all has to be recognised as part of your apprenticeship. It has to be logged down and 20% is part of the apprenticeship. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. So these are the different apprenticeships that we offer in construction and engineering currently. So property maintenance operative at level two, carpentry at level two and level three, Plumbing and domestic heating is level three. There actually is no level two now, so you would work um, towards a level three. So the level two would kind of be incorporated in there as well. Brick laying at level two and level three. Construction site supervisor, which is a level four qualification. Painter and decorator at level two. And a construction and contracting operations program, which is level three. Okay. If you want any details on any of the apprenticeships, if you go onto the link that's just shown here, um, it, it covers all of the standard apprenticeships. Um, and there's a, a key, so if you just put the name, kind of, if you're not sure what the standard is, you can just put um, you know, a key word in there and it will, it will pick up any of the apprenticeship standards um, that you might be interested in. Okay, thank you very much. If there's any questions after, so I can take. Thank you, Shirley. Um, we have had a question come in from someone who's watching, um, and that was a question around how do you make your application stand out? Uh, I guess particularly if in relation uh, maybe to that Govia scenario where there might be 900 applicants uh, for, for a lot less vacancies. Um, Shirley, from your point of view, um, I'm, sh I'm assuming the college can help with that. You would help with you know, with the application process and... Yeah, I mean, our sales team, we have Lashanda and we have Holly, they're fantastic at, you know, obviously guiding the apprentices and helping them to fill out their application form. So I think really is, um, overwhelmingly, is, is, is passion for what you want to do, you know, show a real enthusiasm, I think is, you know, is a lot of it, you know, a lot of interest. Some apprentices come with prior knowledge, you know, so they can build on, you know, what knowledge they've got. So talking about the knowledge, the experience that they have, um, really anything like that. It depends on, you know, where they are. If they, if they haven't got an experience in that field, just thinking about different things, you know, that they sh in, in a way that they can show their interest. You know, I've followed YouTube clips on, you know, how to plumb a sink, you know, or something like that. You know, just really showing... Yeah, initiative. showing initiative and, and showing initiative. willing. Because even if you haven't got that experience, you know, yeah. you can show that through other ways and showing, you know, you're really keen, willing to work hard. You know, timekeeping is always paramount, attendance. So all of those kind of things. I've got a question just taking you back to these levels because these mean nothing to me. So let's assume okay. you don't mean anything, just very briefly. Presumably, if you're thinking of being uh, applying for an apprentice, vacancy the college will help to assess what level you might be at to know whether you're a level two three four obviously seven you've mentioned degree level um, but just taking a simple example of a painter and decorator um level two would would be someone who has no ability or has no experience how, how does it work yeah the thing is it, it's very different for each domain you, you know you guys are all our work up to that because it really depends on the qualifications so if you wanted to be a painter and decorator, um, it, there is only a level two qualification in that. So obviously somebody without experience or somebody who may have prior experience, because what we can do is we can look at prior knowledge and then say, okay, this is experience that you gain towards the qualification. Um, and these are the things that, that the extra things now that you need to do in order to gain it. So sometimes it is the actual qualification itself, but it's where it's set at. 
So you can only do a level two qualification. Um, level three would be more supervisory uh, role. Um, but say, for example, plumbing, with the old framework, we used to have level two, and then you could progress on to a level three, which obviously would be more advanced work. Now there is only a level three. So even if you are a complete novice, you know, you would go on to a level three program, and it's a four-year program. So you would work through through that. So it really depends on the apprenticeship, the level. And, um, and I guess not to be put off by that, the message really. No, not at all. Come and, not at all, come and talk to, to yourselves at the college. Uh, yeah. because, just because you see it's a level three, you don't yeah. have to that can't be for me no not at all that's yeah, yeah that's not generally how it works yeah so you know we have school leavers going on to a, a level three plumbing course so okay. yeah oh, right. yeah exactly. what they would would actually i must just stress is the maths and english so if you are doing um, a level three qualification you would have to attain a level two uh functional skills qualification uh, in maths and english if you don't already have GCSEs in that. Again, yes. that shouldn't put you off if you don't have that. No, um, no, because we provide the, the training, you know, we provide the support and the lessons to, to, in order for them to get those qualifications. Brilliant. That's yeah. great. Thank you so much, Shirley. I was going okay. to go on, uh, to Lashandra, um, who really importantly, uh, we need to say, is an ex-apprentice. Um, so this is someone who's been through this program at Croydon College um, and Lashanda, you can talk to us a little bit about that um, and also talk us through from being an apprentice at Croydon College, you've now got yourself a job uh, and you look after the um, the registration process. Uh, so hi and talk to us uh, through your next few slides. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Lashana Malcolm. I'm a former apprentice at Croydon College, a business admin apprentice, and now I am a assistant skills advisor at Croydon College working in the apprenticeship department. So first, I'm just going to go through how to apply the application process and any useful tips on your application. So next slide, please. Um, so in order to apply for any of our apprenticeships, you must apply through the Croydon College website. You can apply on the Croydon College website or the National Apprenticeship website, but please keep in mind that you have to apply for the apprenticeship job vacancy. In order to actually start the apprenticeship, you must be employed. Um, please ensure whenever you do send your application that you respond to each question in as much detail as possible and also ensure to attach your CV. And if for any reason maybe you don't have a lot of work experience or you don't have any maybe course experience doing that apprenticeship course you're interested in, you may want to add a cover letter just to give the employer an idea of why you're really interested in this apprenticeship and just show your enthusiasm and passion for it. So once you've applied through the Croydon College website, your application will get reviewed and shortlisted. And once your application has been shortlisted, then you'll be contacted for a phone interview. After the phone interview, you'll be invited over to the college for an initial assessment this used to happen before the whole COVID-19 lockdown, but now we have come up with a way to bring that initial assessment online, so you won't have to come to the college anymore. So what you would do is what, what we would ask for is some documents. Oh, sorry. Oh, my fault. So you just go, we'll just ask for some documents and just ask you a few questions about your interest in this apprenticeship. Um, if you don't have any math and English GCSEs, maybe C or 4 and above, or any functional skills or equivalent, um, you'll be expected to do a math and English assessment with us and you'll be expected to do that math and English assessment online now. Um, after the initial assessment, we will send your CV and cover letter over to the employer and we will wait until the employer gets back to us and confirm whether or not they would like to interview you. Once they have confirmed that, we'll arrange that whole interview for you. You attend that interview and the employer has the final decision of whether or not they'll like to hire you as an apprentice. Um, next slide, please. So whenever you do apply for an apprenticeship, please ensure that you attach a CV just to show details about what qualifications you have, um, any work experience you have, um, anything, or just to write a paragraph or two about why you're really interested in this apprenticeship. Um, 
and it is a really good idea to attach a cover letter as well, especially when you don't have as much work experience in that field, just to say, just to show your passion for that apprenticeship role. Um, if you are selected for an interview, we would help you with an interview preparation, if that's something you would be interested in. So if an employer would like to see you, we could go through a few questions with you and help you as much as we can. Um, make sure you have an appropriate email address, though this point has been put in because sometimes people would use an email address that's a bit inappropriate or they would have a username that won't be appropriate either. But just if you want to put an email like your first name, your last name at hotmail.co.uk, that would be a good idea. Um, and make sure that we have the correct contact details on your application. Next slide, please. So this is our apprenticeship vacancy list. Um, these are all of the apprenticeships that are advertised on the Croydon College website. This is updated every Monday. Um, some of the apprenticeships are with Clever Carrier Housing, St. Nicholas School. A lot of these apprenticeships are hoping to do interviews very soon. Um, if you would like any help before you apply, please don't hesitate to try and contact me. I'll be more than happy to help you in any way that I can. Um, any questions? Lovely. Thank you very much, Alishanda. Um, that's really great. And it's really great to see that there is so many vacancies out there and there are real life vacancies uh, and they're now. So um, hopefully this afternoon uh, we've been able to give you a good flavour um, of what is available in terms of apprenticeships right now, as well as a more longer term view of, of what uh, might be available. I think the message that we want to share with everybody today is that uh, the college is here, uh, it's in the middle of Croydon and it's there for you uh, to come and talk to. Uh, and although we might not be able to do that physically at the moment, uh, we do encourage you all uh, to uh, email uh, and we will share the email address. Uh, following this, you can email directly through uh, and get a response. Um, you can also uh, attend one of the advice clinics. Now, in fact, tomorrow afternoon and every Wednesday afternoon between two and four, uh, Quinn College have some virtual advice clinics. So if you have any question about anything about the college, whether that be an apprenticeship or another course or just generally, uh, please do log on to that advice clinic. Um, if you go to the website, you will see that under open days. Uh, you can log on and there will be a real life person who will take your question. If they can't answer it there on the spot, uh, they will take it away and they will make sure that they will get back to you. Also uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, between uh, four and six we have an HE open day so a higher education open day. Uh, so if you're interested in finding out about more about the more general subjects within higher education that the Croydon College can offer uh, and Causton College uh, please do uh, log on uh, again to the website uh, and that will uh, enable you to log in to that virtual open day which as I say is tomorrow afternoon between four and six and then just to say that uh, before the week is out you will have plenty more opportunities uh, to hear about uh, being a, uh, an apprentice uh, with Croydon College. On Thursday we're looking at the subject of business and finance and also digital and IT uh, and then on Friday we're looking at teacher training. Now just to say that although these are sector specific uh, they do cover a whole myriad of, of skills. It isn't just as we've learned today about necessary being interested in construction. Uh, as Angela from Clarion pointed out there's a number of different functions that are available. So it just remains for me this afternoon to say a huge thank you to all of our panelists, to Angela from Clarion, to Daryl from Centronic, to Shirley uh, and Lysander from uh, Croydon College, and obviously to John for heading up uh, the Croydon College uh, Apprenticeship Programme, and to Rupali um, from Govia Thameslink. Um, it's been great to hear from you all. Um, as I say, do keep in contact. We hope that you will apply for one of these vacancies, uh, and we hope we will see you very soon on one of our other apprentices. The next one will start in half an hour uh, and we're talking about the hospitality in industry, a very, very topical subject at the moment, uh, but there are still opportunities to join the hospitality industry. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you all shortly. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.